This is the rolling bevel planking saw that I made. Um, it's um, very much based on the one that um, Louis Sozetti, God, I hope I'm saying his last name right. I've never actually heard someone say his last name decisively, like they actually knew how to say it. Uh, anyway, um, tips from a shipwright guy, uh, built one of these. Um, the basis of it is the Milwaukee 6365 is the model. He does not tell you that. I found that out. Um, uh, obviously, they don't make these anymore, but they are available on eBay pretty much all the time. Um, and they are particularly good in that um, they're, apart from like the, like the track saws that you get now, like Bastille ones and that, um, these ones are the only ones that I know about, anyway, that has the tilting mechanism means that the kerf doesn't move in relationship to the sole plate when you tilt it, which means that you can run this down a batten. Um, you know, you just, you figure out what the spacing is between your kerf and the edge that will remain constant. You lay out your plank, you, you have like a little, um, just a little scribe stick that's that width that you run down and you put your batten, you don't put your batten on the actual edge, you put your batten in from the edge by that much, and then you run this down it, is the theory. I've not actually done this yet, I've done a couple of test cuts with this, it seems to work really well, um, but uh, yeah, so um, my process was, um, it's all steel pretty much, um, I used existing holes that were in this bit of hardware here to screw in this just this piece of steel there which all that does is it's it's something to weld the foot of of the screw to which the screw is the screw out of a um a bar clamp like a welding type bar clamp um i went to harbor freight they have absurdly cheap ones at harbor freight and for this application are totally fine. I don't know that I'd use them for other things. They're too cheap. Um, uh, something must be wrong with them. I don't know what it is yet. But, um, anyway, uh, you can weld the, the pad to there. Um, you obviously you cut the, um, the female part of this uh, part of the clamp off and then welded um, this little tab here which goes to um, this piece is the the depth adjustment for the saw the the tricky thing is you've got to kind of set you can't mess with the the the, um, the depth very much but if you're doing all the same thing as blanking you shouldn't need to um, just because if this is loose this doesn't work very well um, secondly I I found that with just the one anchor point for the whole pivot mechanism, since you have to leave it loose for it to work, just the one left a lot of slop in the whole thing. So I just took this piece off and I forget exactly what I did, but anyway, I figured out how to add a second pin. So there are now two pins that ride up and down this track, um, which, and they're like, very lightly tightened which still allows the mechanism to work and there being two of them means there's a lot less slop in it um and then uh lastly you make some kind of thing to put your scale onto which was just a case of you know, i had to muck about with a bit and this is not like not very good um if i did it again i would do it a bit differently um, but it works. Uh, I had to mess around a bunch to make sure that it would clear all the various parts of the saw as it, as it turned. Um, and then of course went through the process of like, you know, making a little, a little pointer and then going through the revolutions and figuring out, you know, taking a bevel gauge and seeing what the actual degrees were at different points on here and then marking them onto your gauge thing. Oh, and then I, I welded an extension onto the screw from the clamp 
just because like down there there wasn't enough clearance um, so yeah and then just in operation it's just turn away and it you know you've got your marks on the top here and you're just following your marks and away you go um, so yeah materials needed are some steel you need access to a welder you need um, the means to tap uh, threads into some holes just because you have to drill drill into the um, into the cast part of the saw and then thread those holes for like for little machine screws to go into um, I didn't have to do that for these because they were existing holes I just figured out what screw would go into them um, but you know that one and that one and that one I had to drill in and tap which is no big deal um, and then uh, I added some some nylon washers to the pins in the whole slide assembly and sprayed it with Teflon spray just so that it would move a little bit more cleanly. Um, uh, the last thing I would like to do is figure out some sort of sensible way of, of actually locking the um, the guard open just because in this application for the saw it's not really necessary and it's very inconvenient. Um, so. You know, you're not doing the kind of kinds of cut with this where not having a guard would make it super dangerous. Um, you know, you're doing it in a very controlled way on a bench all the time. So, um, yeah, uh, I hope that helps. I mean, this is this is very similar to the one that you know they made for tips tips from a ship, right? Um, but uh, they did not include a lot of information about how to actually do it. So I hope I hope this helps. Um. And you know, I was worried that it wouldn't go back down very well, and it, it goes back down better than I thought. Um, see, the only thing really like the screw isn't really pulling it back down it kind of depends on the saw's weight to to do it properly mostly i think but it seems to be enough so it's good now i would say um while this saw with the curve staying in the same place relative to the edge of the saw plate is good it's not a hundred percent necessary. I know the, um, you know, Steve and Alex at Acorn Tarabella, they did not use one of these saws. They used a normal one where the cur honestly, for the type of bevels that you do on planking, the kerf drifts so little it, you, you can kind of fudge it. Um, it's not the end of the world. Uh, but I figured out what saw it was and I tracked one down and I think it was like $50. So why not? You know, <laughs> um, uh, but if you if you can't find one that that's a good price, any saw will really do. I think um, as long as you have, like I think some of these newer ones with like the magnesium bases and whatnot, it, um, it might be difficult to find a way to anchor the whole assembly properly to the saw plate. But um, that's um, supposition. <laughs>